In today's video, we are going to explore crank function in Picoscope. I use a CKP capture to examine the rotational speed of the crankshaft and consider its implications for phase rulers uh, during in cylinder pressure testing. The example is provided by Justin Miller from GM Diagnostics and I'm very grateful to him for providing uh, all the right waveforms. This include the system voltage, the CKP capture, the CMP capture, and the in-cylinder pressure transducer values for one of the cylinders. In this waveform, we can identify the average speed of the crankshaft by two ways either considering the distance between the compression peaks or the distance between the sink notches in the CKP waveform. For example, here I have the cursors already located at the sink notches, and so we can see that the frequency is 3.5 Hz. To get that in RPM, we need to multiply by 60 and get 210 RPM. But the question is, does this speed remain constant or not? And this has a big implication on the use of phase rulers. If uh, the speed of the crankshaft remains constant, then we can use the uh, phase rulers because all these markings, 180, 360, 540, and so on, assume that the speed of the crankshaft remains constant throughout the process. But is it constant here? Well, let's notice a few things. The VRS CKP sensor amplitude typically increases uh, when the speed increases, and we do see humps here in the CKP waveform. Also, they are not actually very regular, because here you see one hump and then suddenly you see three humps, three humps again. So there's something interesting going on with uh, the amplitude, but the amplitude is not a very precise measurement for the CKP uh, speed. So we will try to do something else. What can we do? Well, we can take a closer look at the system voltage, which is a proxy for a relative compression test. Unfortunately, on this waveform right now, it is on a very small scale, and so the details are not quite visible. So what we are going to do, we are going to increase the scale five times and also filter it at two kilohertz to see the details. And if we do that, this is what we are going to get. So we see that there are dips in voltage that correspond to the compression events. And indeed, we see that the pattern changes from the left side of the waveform to the right side of the waveform. We see that the cylinder for which the pressure testing is done has a somewhat lower compression than the other cylinders. I don't know what exactly is happening, whether it's a weak cylinder or there is a change in compression caused by the in-cylinder pressure testing equipment, but we definitely see here that the compressions for different cylinders during this test are not equal. Compressions of different cylinders are not equal, surely that will be reflected in the crankshaft rotational speed. So let's go ahead and add a crank function call in mass channels of the picoscope. And for that, we first need to figure out how many teeth we have in our CKP uh, pattern. So for that we need to zoom in into the CKP waveform 
and locate our cursors at the sync notches 1 and 2 and then consider the following. If the tooth was not missing then there would be a falling edge at the sync notch and then going back to the regular sine wave pattern. So what we are going to do is we are going to add a measurement of falling edge counts in between those two cursors. And this will show up below here in Picoscope and the value will be 35. And that means that there will be 35 teeth plus one missing. So in total it's a 36. We are going to use that number in our crank function. So we have 36 teeth in total in our pattern and the pattern covers 360 degrees so there will be 10 degrees for each tooth. How convenient. Alright, are we ready to go further? Well, let's notice one other thing in this uh, zoomed-in pattern. Let's count the number of peaks until we get to a TDC. So here, starting from this peak, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then the TDC happens. Now there should be another TDC happening uh, around 360 degrees. So let's count from this sync notch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's where the phase ruler is predicting 360. But it should happen at 9. So more than 10 degrees away from what the phase ruler said. So just by counting the peaks in the CKP waveform after we zoom in into it, we can already see that the phase rulers are off. Okay, now we are ready to go further. We know the number of teeth and we are ready to apply the math channel uh, to channel A. We click next and we get the black line which is our crank speed. It's far from perfect for several reasons. First of all, we have only 36 teeth on this reluctor. There are some better ones with 60 teeth or more. They provide much nicer resolution. But here we have to deal with what we have. The areas around the sink notches are completely blanked out. We cannot really see anything around those. So we see that when there are compression events, the crankshaft speed drops down, but not so much for this cylinder in question. But for others, it's well pronounced. We go down a lot, then go back up a lot, sharp drop down, sharp increase, sharp drop down, sharp increase, as expected. There are also some wiggles throughout this uh, waveform is it possible that this is related to some valves opening and closing? Um, well, I'm not sure, but if you have information about that, please write in the comment section about that. Now let's notice that the dips in the system voltage fairly well correspond to the bottom of the crankshaft speed in pretty much all cylinders. However, the phase rollers 180, 360, 540 are not aligning with those. And so let's take a closer look and see what happening. Well, we already had our uh, discussion about 360 degree phase ruler and notice that it's about 10 degrees off 
Now let's take a look at 180 degree phase ruler. So let's zoom in on the pattern and uh, figure out where where 180 degree ruler should be. To find the location of the 180 degree uh, we need to count falling edges starting from the sink notch. So here we would have falling edges 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the point where the TDC is is where the falling edge count goes from 8 to 9. And so to get 180 degrees we need to add 18 plus 8 and get a point where the counts go from 26 to 27. And that's what we are going to do with the cursor. We are going to find the point where the falling edge count is 26 and a little bit further it will switch to 27. This is this point and we can go and see that the phase ruler predicts 198 degrees here, even though the actual value is, as we just counted manually, 180 degrees. So we are 18 degrees off according to the phase rulers. And this is easy to understand why this happens. Here is this horizontal line is where I marked the average crankshaft speed of 210 RPM. And we see that here the actual speed is below the average and it gets even more below when there is one of the cylinders going into the compression stroke. So the actual crankshaft angle starts lagging behind the phase ruler because the phase ruler assumes that the speed of the crankshaft is constant, but it's not. The crankshaft slows down and at the end of this process we get around 18 degree difference. And this is not something that you would be able to uh, just see on the waveform without zooming in and counting the falling edge counts and plotting the crankshaft speed. Note that at this point the crankshaft speed is above the average so the actual crank angle starts to catch up with the phase rulers but then it drops down again and so there is some sort of an accordion effect uh, where the crank angle lags behind the phase rollers, then catches back up. It's almost like the time is compressing and decompressing, which can be quite confusing. And of course, if you are using some sort of uh, angle measurement, to check the timing of the engine and you are in this case is 18 degrees off it might make your diagnosis more complicated. So the next question is what uh, to do with this situation? Well we can just continue to count the falling edges uh, using the uh, measurements tool but it's quite cumbersome Technically speaking, the crank angle is an integral of the crankshaft speed, but Picoscope is not able to take the integral of this curve because of all the gaps and other artifacts. So this is also not possible. I've heard that Type I scope is uh, able to 
calculate the crank angle, but because I don't have one and uh, uh, don't really have a, a good documentation for it, I'm not able to comment whether this would be possible to do it conveniently in Type I scope, but those who have that scope can try this experiment. And finally, there is a possibility uh, to save this data into a CSV file and process it in another software package like Octave. And if there is sufficient interest in that, I can uh, try to demonstrate how to do that. So please uh, uh, leave your comments in the comment box below and uh, hope to have a good discussion about the subject.